Hello and welcome to Hoop Seven's Basketball Hustle for another week. And to say there's a lot going on in the world of basketball and the world in general, it's probably a great understatement right now. So we'll get through all of the action in round 13 of the NBL. We'll have a look forward to round 14 in the NBL. Plenty of stuff happening on and off the court for us to get through. We'll hopefully catch up with the scoring machine, Sean Redditch as well. Don't hold us to it though. He can be a difficult <laughs> man to, to, get, to, get, to get hold of. But I'm Chris Pike, one man who's not difficult to get hold of, one man who I'm really enjoying having as a co-host now, Cody Ellis. How do we find you this week? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Healthy again. So, uh, yeah, yep. Um, happy, happy to be back and uh, a fairly crazy week on and off the floor. It's almost like you don't know where to start right now. We've yeah. got a war going on in, in Europe. Yep. We've got half of Australia underwater. Yep. And we've got a lot happening in the basketball world. So we're here thanks to Hoop7. Head to hoop7.com.au to get all of your basketball gear. Or if you live close enough, head into the Perth city. Their store on Murray Street will not let you down. I'm not sure where to start, Cody. We've got a long list of talking points there, but above everything else, what stood out to you from the weekend of basketball? We saw a lot of NBL action. We saw a lot of boomers action. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot going on. What, what stands out to you? Uh, oh, fair few things, I think. Um, obviously, the Boomers getting it done, uh, which we thought they would, but uh, in, in pretty good fashion. And uh, the young boys really stepping up and led well by Nick. Um, it was really good to see. Um, hopefully, people were able to watch and, and keep some eyes on, on some of the young boys. Um, but the big thing for me this week is the, is the Sobes um, bronze medal being yeah. stolen. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, don't want to start the the podcast off on a on a average note but um when something like that happens uh, it's it's no good and um you know they interviewed Luke Longley mm. in the in the game and you know it's something that isn't worth a whole lot to to pretty much anyone apart from <laughs> apart from Sobes you know because it's yeah. it's sentimental value no you're right um, I mean it's a horrible thing he so he, I'm not sure if it happened overnight or if it happened while he was actually playing the game mm. in, in Brisbane on, on Saturday night when they, they, got, they got their win. But either way, when it happened, to realise that it's lost, look, you make the perfect point. Whoever stole it, mm. they can't sell it. No. It means nothing to them because they yeah. didn't, didn't earn it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Soves doesn't care about getting this guy in, or girl in trouble for taking it. Just put it back in his letterbox and yeah. give it back to him because it, it's worthless to you. You can't, you can't make money out of it. No. Please just give it back. Well, exactly, exactly. And, you know, it, it's one of those things. It's, I mean, it's a first ever medal for, mm. you know, an Australian basketball, Australian men's basketball yeah. team at the Olympics. And, you know, you, you work your butt off for basically your entire career to, yeah. to be able to represent your country, yeah. especially at the Olympic Games. Yeah. It's, its value is, is, uh, is definitely um, the sentimental side. And, for, you know, to lose something like that, it would be heartbreaking. Um, so I'm hoping that someone's seen something and, and they can uh, you know, get some info mm. to Brizzy and, and, and find it for him because, uh, yeah, that's, that's really disappointing. It was a horrible way to wake up to that news on, on Sunday and I wrote about it earlier in the week. I mean, in terms of how, what it means to Sobes, I would think outside of his wife and his two kids, mm -hmm. it's the most valuable thing to him in his house. Yeah, I think so. It would be. It would be. Um, yeah, like I said, it's it's something you work your butt off for, um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's worthless to whoever has it. Really, mm, yeah. like you can't sell it. No. Like you said, if you if you do sell it, it's not going to be worth much. No. It's worth whatever the bronze is worth, and nothing exactly. So um, yeah, I'm hoping they can get it back. Um, there's been a, a fairly good outreach from everyone. Mm. Um, sharing stuff on social media. Well, and there's no way whoever st stole it doesn't now realise what they've taken. Yeah, and everyone, exactly. Everyone wants, wants to get it back. Exactly. And, you know, from the sound of it, I, I don't know if it was just someone going through people's houses or if it was, you know, a, a direct thing that they were trying to get. That would um, make it worse, wouldn't it? That's it would. Let's hope it wasn't it that. It would. I'm, I'm hoping not, but, uh, yeah, hopefully he gets it back. Let's hope so. Not sure if this is a better note or not, but... I think we have to start off this show by paying tribute to, to Dr. Jack Bendad as well, yep. um, who passed away last week. And, and really, when you live the full life that he did, I mm -hmm. think it's a, a time to celebrate and probably not mourn, yep. mourn his passing because he had a hell of a life and he did a lot for the entire community of WA outside of basketball. But what he did for the Perth Wildcats is, is enormous and, and really, they aren't the powerhouse 
organisation that they are now without without him. Right. And the NBL in general um, isn't where it is now without him either because he was instrumental in, in saving the league when it needed saving mm-hmm. 12 and 13 years ago, helped get it back on its feet, helped put it in a position where somebody like Larry Kesselman wanted to mm-hmm. invest in it and take over. And yep. his legacy is, is quite enormous. It is. It's huge. And, um, you know, obviously thoughts out to the Bendat family. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's sad, but again, like you said, it, it's something that you need to celebrate his life because of what he, yeah. what he, especially what he achieved and what he did for WA basketball and the Cats, but like basketball in general in, in the whole NBL. Mm. Um, it's one of those things that I think a lot of people probably saw it coming over the past, yeah. geez, probably the past couple of years, yeah. I think. Um, I think especially after his wife, Eleanor, well, that's it. died as well. Yep, yep, and that's got to be tough. That's got to be tough, but um, absolute pioneer. Did you ever meet him? I did. Met him a couple of times. Um, great man. You know, every time I met him, he was awesome. Always up for a chat. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, certainly a loss for, for basketball in general. A wonderful man, but also a very hard taskmaster as well. Yeah. So I reflect back to when I was working at the Wildcats as the media manager, and every time he saw me, um, he wanted to know why the club wasn't on the front page, why they weren't on the back page, <laughs> yep. why they weren't leading the Channel 7 News that night. That was that was the key, but he demanded success. And mm. I remember the goals that he set the club financially, the goals that he set the club in every area was was at the top. I mean, you saw it at every season launch. He would demand a championship mm-hmm. and, and nothing less. And, and that went through every area of the club. He wanted the sponsorship department to, to reach their targets. He wanted yep. the membership to reach their target. Yep. He wanted nothing less than the 13,500 people yeah. in ROC Arena every single night. But you don't become as successful in life as he does without having such high standards. Well, not at all. And I think he's, uh, he's set a pretty good little uh, footprint mm. to, uh, to what's successful and, and how to be successful. Yeah, it, honestly, anyone trying to lead a successful campaign should, should certainly see what he did yeah. and, and try following those footsteps. I actually think it's a great thing that he sold the club while he was still mm-hmm. alive and yeah. he passed it on to somebody that he approved of before he passed away. Um, I think that turned out to be a great thing rather than him losing the club because he passed away. Oh, for sure. And with all that work that you put into something, um, you want to see it changed over into hands that you think will continue that success mm. and continue down the path that you've, you've led uh, the club. So I think, I think that was very smart of him. Um, I think it was... It was very well done, and um, I, I think he'd be happy with, with how it's in, in good hands now. Absolutely. Now, as for his Perth Wildcats, they lost to the three games in a row. They lost yep. on Saturday to the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix, and they were in a little bit of trouble. Mm-hmm. But they dug deep on Monday night, got the win in Tasmania. How much do you think a boost it, it would have given them, knowing that the next day they were getting to come home for the first time in two months? Yeah, I think it's that... Like I've said in the past couple of episodes, that light at the end of the tunnel for yeah. them, um, knowing that they'll be able to probably see family for a little bit, which is huge. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it, it's it's massive for them, and I think to get that win over Tassie was, was big. Mm. Um, and I also think it kind of proved to the rest of the league that you can't just show up against Tassie. You've sure. actually got to fight for it, which they did. They did, and they did really well. And um, I'm, I'm happy that they, uh, they get to come home for a bit and... Mm. See the fam. Can you put yourself in their shoes? How do you think you would feel having to spend two months away from mm-hmm. from Lauren and, and Chase? Well, I've done it. Yeah. I've done it. My last year at, um, at Illawarra, right. um, yeah. Lauren and Chase were here in Perth while I was yeah. over there. So it's it's tough. It's, it's really, really tough. Um, it's mentally draining. It's something that as a professional athlete, you put your heart and soul onto whatever you're doing so basketball for instance right now um but like once you step away from that you need your releases away from basketball to kind of set your mind right and all that sort of stuff so when you're away from family especially when you've got kids uh or you know a a wife a fiance what have you um it's tough not being there so you go home and you kind of just in your own thoughts for the whole time um without having that release and you do it's really draining mentally um so i think this would be nothing but good for him yep. to come home, uh, see family, kind of mentally reset and, uh, and challenge the second half of the season. We've talked a lot about how tough that last season at Illawarra was for you, but 
I didn't factor in the fact that you were away from yeah, your yeah. family as well. That might be a discussion we have to have another time yeah. because I, that, that's another layer to it that yep. makes it <laughs> makes it a lot more <laughs> a lot more heartbreaking to, to be to be fair. Yeah. Um, let's get onto a positive thing. The Sydney Kings right now. Yep. Would you be willing to say that they're the best team in the league right now? And would you be willing to say that Jalen Adams is the best player in the league right now? Two huge calls. <laughs> Jeez. Um, I'd probably say they're one of the hottest teams. I don't yep. know if I'd say they're the best team. Yep. Um, currently, they're probably one of the more consistent teams. And, and yep. like I said, they're, they're the hottest team. Adams, is he's certainly making a case for himself. Yep. Um, you know, you've, you've still got to prove you're better than Bryce. Mm -hmm. And that's, at the end of the day, that's, that's it. Um, if you're going off the past three, four rounds, you'd say, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you've got to do it over a period sure. of time. Like Bryce has done, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but he is—he is cooking right now, yeah. and it's so fun to watch. Yeah. Um, the, the Kings are just fun to watch in general. Um, the way they play, they—they they move the ball well, they yeah. share it. Playing really small ball, they are with yeah. with Angus running the floor at times, yeah. um, which was really interesting. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, good to good to watch, and, and something very different to uh, to what the other contenders, I guess, have in in their bigs. Yeah. Now, I asked those questions. It didn't necessarily mean that I believed them. I, <laughs> yep, I, would, I, would, yep, still no, I would still say Melbourne United is the best yes. team, and I, I still say Bryce is the best player in the league. But yep. Jalen Adams, it's not just one area of his game that it is standing out. Yep. We've seen he can shoot the ball, mm -hmm. but he can create off the dribble. He's probably the best guard we've seen in a long time who can take full advantage off a pick and roll. Yep. Off the pick and roll, he can either step back and then shoot because he's got a bit of space, mm -hmm. but... He can also take it inside off the back of that. He can finish. We mm -hmm. saw that against the Brisbane yeah. Bullets. But he's passing to find the the trailing big or either the, the big in the dunking position who, you know, Xavier Cooks is benefiting big yeah, time from it. Time. <laughs> the way he can pass the ball and set up his teammates or even the three ball, Sean Bruce benefited twice against yep. the 36ers as well. It's all of those factors that make him very tough to stop. Oh, for sure. And he's the best point guard in the league. Sure. Bryce yep. is a two man, yep. right? Um, so he is far and away the best point guard in the mm. league, I think. I actually don't think it's close. I, I don't, don't think I don't, it is. I either. can't even think of who would be second. No, no. Yeah, it's him and then Daylight. Yeah. And you're right. His his ability to see the floor um, off those pick and rolls, find the open man, kind of squeeze it between you know a couple of players where you probably think, oh, not sure how he got it through there. Mm. Um, just making the right plays, I think. Um, his IQ is huge, yeah. and that's something that they needed. And you can tell now that he's back in full health, touch wood, that they are now a force. Mm -hmm. you know, earlier in the season, people wrote Sydney off because he wasn't playing, he was injured, he was in and he was out a bit, yeah. didn't really get into a rhythm. And now he's doing that, the team's humming. They're yeah. looking really good. Xavier Cooks as well. Another interesting question for you. Is he the best dunker in the league right now? <laughs> And in fairness, a lot of that is based on the work that Adams is doing, setting him up. Yeah. Well, I think Adams probably had the best dunk of the <laughs> yeah. year, yeah. easily. Yep. But uh, yeah, Zave is just, he's just eating. He's, he's, um, he's dunking everything he can, which, mm -hmm. is, which is good. Yeah. Um, finishing strong, making people actually contest him. So yeah. right now I'd say yeah. yeah. Um, no one else is really dunking like he is. But he's also getting spoon fed like a baby, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Tasmania Jack Jumpers took a little bit of a backward step this this weekend. Lost their two games. They they've lost a little bit of touch with the top four. Mm -hmm. As a result, I mean, clearly they weren't ever going to be able to shoot like they did in that no. win over Illawarra again. But yeah, I mean, they they fought hard against the Wildcats. But as Scott Ross said after the game, there was a class differential mm -hmm. oh, between yeah. the two teams, and and probably it was similar against the Brisbane Bullets because. Lamar Patterson played really well. Robert yep. Franks played really well. Nathan Sobey played really well. Mm -hmm. And Jason Kadee played really well. So maybe it's a class differential. What did you make of their, their two games? Yeah, I think this is probably where everyone's realised that where the jack jumpers are mm -hmm. and, and what they need to do to combat their um, up and in your face type, up and in, up and in the lanes um, yeah. style of play. Sure. Um, and you're right. Look, on paper, they're they're not the best team in the league, mm. right? And that's where you have your games like against the Cats and even against Brisbane. Yeah. 
who are classy outfit on paper, mm. you kind of see where there is that class difference. Mm. And all credit to Tassie with how they've done so far this season and, and how Scott Roth's got them playing. They're, they've been really good. It's been really fun to watch them play and, and how they're playing. But it's going to be another year or two before they can reach that next step, I think. Obviously, it's tough without Magne in there. Mm. Um, and I think they're starting to see the effects of him not being in there now. Yeah. Um, teams are figuring out how to exploit that. So it'll be, it'll be really good for them when he gets back, mm -hmm. just to bolster that big side. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's tough. It's tough. But I mean, they're, they're still hanging on. If, they're still in the mix too. Well, they are. They, they definitely are. And they're one of those teams that could be a danger team towards the end of the season. So, yeah, I, I think they're doing really well, um, but th there is that class difference, I think, for now. We talked to, in a little bit of depth about the Cairns Taipans last week. We've seen two more games from them now. They beat the Bullets on back on Thursday night. It wasn't a pretty game, but they got the win, and, and Machado played a really good game. Mm -hmm. um, he looked healthy, he looked energised, and he led them to that win. Um, he didn't look anywhere near as good against Melbourne on, no. on Sunday, and a lot of that would have to do with having... Having Delhi and Shaili yeah. hounding him, so you can understand Good that. Time. But it's just something that doesn't feel quite right about the Taipans. And I actually think Stephen Zimmerman, looking like he's found his feet in the league right now, mm -hmm. he, he's someone. There's not too many genuine bigs in the league who you can dump it down to, and he can play back to the basket and, yeah. and create a shot. He's one of them. He spoke after the game on Sunday. You could you could hear the frustration in his voice. You could see it in his face. He was feeling good in that game, but he just never saw the ball. Yeah. So he didn't take many shots. So he had it finished with 11 and 5. Yep. Um, to me, that could be a difference maker for them because he can take advantage of the oppositions. But I don't know, there's just something not quite right there in terms of the chemistry and the players don't all look totally, totally happy. No, they don't. And I think that's got something to do with the fact that there's been players in and out and in and sure. out all season. Yep. So they haven't had that... Um, one squad for you know more than a few games together, and chemistry is huge in the NBL, and and you can see it with the teams that have stayed healthy, that are that are playing really well together. Um, it's tough because you got two two guards that are fairly ball dominant. Yep. They kind of need that need the ball to yep. to perform. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, they're both really good with the ball. Yeah. So, but I think they need to figure out how to get him some more touches now. Yeah. Like you said, he's found his feet. Start of the season, I was not sold on him at all. No. I thought he was weighing over his head. Um, I didn't think he'd be able to compete at this level at all. Um, but he has now kind of found his two feet. He's He knows how to attack the other bigs yeah. now. He he, um, he crashes the board really well. He's just that big body. Yeah. Um, and I, I do. I think they need to figure out how to get him some more touches to kind of keep him happy for, for doing all the, the dirty work inside. Yeah. And even when Nate Jawa gets back, mm -hmm. I think he can rotate those two yeah. and play them in a similar role. Yeah. Because even when Nate was playing, he wasn't seeing the ball either. No. But they, they've got two genuine bigs that they can dump the ball down into, and good things generally do happen when you, when you do that. They do. They do. And, you know, Nate... When he's on, you, you're not stopping him when mm. he's got you and, he, and he's backing you down in the post. He's just too big and too strong. You probably tried a few times. Oh, I sure did, and it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I consider myself fairly strong, but just got moved around mm. like a rag doll with, with him in the post, mate. It's uh, So, yeah, it, and then there's no let-up. You know, you, you put Nate on for a couple of minutes and you put Zim on for a couple of minutes, and that's just two big, strong bodies mm. to go up against. Yeah. And really, the, the other bigs around the league aren't those big bruises. No, they're not. You know? No. Um, you look at JLA, who's a big stick, really. Yeah. Um, the only issue is that they'll have to guard at the other end. Sure. And that's where Fordy is trying to get them to buy in, is more on that end, mm. um, and then just kind of play offensively. Yeah. But I think hopefully they get some more, some more bodies back and full health is the big thing, mm. and they can string some games together where they have the same roster and yeah. get some continuity about them and... Then they can probably start putting in some stuff yeah. and looking towards next year. This year is is probably a write off for them, yeah. um, which you don't want to say halfway through a season. But you've got to look long term as well. Yeah. Um, so putting those baby steps in and and getting forty system down properly and and um, trying to keep everyone happy as well. Well, they're four and nine now. Yeah. I think it, 
the last couple of years we've usually seen, I think it's around 15 or 16 wins you need yep. to get into the top four. I can't see them no. winning 12 winning of the last 15 <laughs> yeah, games, no. in fairness to them. And yep. you make a good point that at no point have they had their full team. Right now they're still without without Nate, they're yep. still without Jared Kenny, yep. and they're still without Court Noy as well. So I think it's tough to judge a team when you haven't seen them at full it strength. Is. So I hope they get that at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of their great positives is Keanu pinned it clearly, and yeah. we'll get to him shortly. Um, let me run through the quick results, and then if anything else jumped out at you about round 13, Cody, yep. let me know. And as we record this, the last game of round 13 is taking place, and it's a big game for the Illawarra Hawks if they can get over the line against the New Zealand Breakers. But right, as we are in the middle of it right now, the Breakers are making their life difficult down in Hobart. But going right back to Thursday night, as we talked about, the Taipans beat the Bullets 73-69. to a game we haven't mentioned a lot yet. The Illawarra Hawks on Friday beat the Adelaide 36ers 87-71. to Then the Bullets broke their losing streak on Saturday, beat the Jack Jumpers 94-86. to Then battle of, battle for second spot this was in the end. Mm-hmm. The South East Melbourne Phoenix beat the Perth Wildcats 86-80. to Remarkably, Bryce Cotton scoreless, but that didn't last for very long. Yep. Um, probably the thriller of the, of the round was in Adelaide again, and the Sydney Kings... Jaden Adams was the man, hit the three on the buzzer on, well, with three seconds to go. And then I'll actually get your thoughts on the last play from the 36ers shortly yeah. as well that didn't give them a shot. No. So the Kings won 93 to 90. Melbourne United, even without Joe Luala Chul, were too good for the Taipans, 89 to 73. And Monday night, as we talked about, the Wildcats over the Jack Jumpers, 89 to 73. We've gone through a lot of those already, Cody, yep. but anything stand out that we haven't touched on? Uh, look, not overly. I think we've touched on most of the main points. But, um, yeah, that Adelaide mm. attempted game <laughs> tire. Yeah, um, interesting play. You know, obviously Sunday has been hot. He's been shooting yeah, the ball absolutely. really well. Yeah. Um, he was probably a reason they were in it yep. um, with his hot shooting. But... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That was an interesting play, and it looked like a frustration out of DJ. Not he, a, he didn't even take a three-point shot. No. If, if his off-balance shot went in, it wasn't even going to come in to be a three-point shot. No, it wasn't. Anyway. It wasn't. So <laughs> it was um, KD all over again from last year. <laughs> yes. Um, but, yeah. It, so what's going through DJ's in, in, in that moment? Clearly the play was drawn up, I would assume, for him to hand it back to yep. Sunday coming off yep. um, the inbounds pass when the Kings were able to come over, come on come on on top and break up the pass, mm-hmm. it looked like DJ said, "Well, screw it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And from watching, it looked like the play was, like I said, throw it to DJ, hand off to Sunday. DJ needs to bump Zave, yep. get him away from it, and then it's Sunday rising up over mm. Jalen Adams, yep. which you'd think is decent. Yep. Sunday's got that height on him. Adams is athletic. But Sunday's got that height. You'd think that's a decent shot. Um, it almost looked like DJ had already just determined in his mind that he was going to fake that and then try to get that step back yeah. that was yeah. he'd already gotten too deep inside the three anyway. If that's the case, why doesn't he make sure he's behind the yeah, line? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it was a bit of a brain fade from, mm. uh, from DJ. But it was, it was also too close to the sideline. Like, it was... Yeah. It was um, I'm not sure about the play. I don't know if, if you'd have probably Hannah's mm. as, as part of that play. Mm. I think the way he'd been playing. Obviously, his three's not falling the way everyone thought he would. Mm-hmm. Um, but he'd been playing really well. Yep. And he just hit a big one to, to bring him back in touch with it. And he's shown he loves that, that moment. He does. Yeah. He does. He's hit a couple like that yep. um, in the season already. So, interesting play. Um, CJ's obviously got probably hundreds of those plays up his yeah. sleeve. <laughs> um but I think the execution of it wasn't well well done. So I, I, I don't know. It, it was interesting how it panned out. You, you never make excuses, but how much, from CJ's point of view, he's a rookie coach, mm-hmm. he's just lost his GM of basketball, Jeff Van Groningen, at the same time they're trying to sign a new import. Yep. He's just lost his assistant coach for the week as well, who unfortunately to Jamie Pillman, um, his mother-in-law passed away, so condolences to... To Jamie, but that meant that CJ didn't have his assistant coach. Yep. He's trying to find an import, and it's all up to him to find that that import. And then he gets to the last play of a big game on, on Sunday, and 
he has to make a decision of what play to, to run yep. all on his own, really. I mean, you don't want to make an excuse, but it's hard to imagine a rookie coach having more on his plate right now. Oh, yeah. No, he's, um, yeah, he's, he's fairly flooded with, mm. with stuff on his plate. So it's tough. And, you know, you, that's why you've got assistance is to, is to help you with that sort of thing. And that Jamie sort of, in that situation oh, perfect. is fantastic. Yeah, 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 he's proven that before. So, you know, it, not having anywhere, anyone there to kind of bounce your ideas off is tough. Mm. Um, and like you said, he's first head coaching gig here. Came in late, didn't choose any of his teams. Well, that's it, you know. It's not the squad that he picked. Yeah. It's got to be tough. And he's, you know, he's not a guy that is going to back down from anything. No. I know that. No. Um, but, you know, he's, he's got a fair excuse for what's going on right now. Um, yeah, no, another guy that I, I just feel for, just stuff's not going his way right now at well, all. Well, in terms of that, Cody, guess what? If he didn't have enough to worry about already, he's now got COVID as well. Yes. And he won't be leaving his home for the next 10 days. He nope. won't be coaching their two games this weekend against no. the Phoenix and the Wildcats. Yep. Jamie Pillman has been away from the team for the last week. He has to be the head coach for these yeah. two games this weekend. Incredible. I don't know how yeah. else to put it. Yeah, I mean, just unlucky, yeah. really. It's, it's just, yeah. it's, it's all happening at once mm. is, is the problem. And it's just kind of snowballed and... Um, that kind of seems to be how that Adelaide organisation has been for the past couple of years, yep. really. It's kind of been not their best couple of years in terms of behind the scenes and on mm. the court, especially, you know, where they were mm. four or five years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, it's tough. And that's, that's a team that I want to see be really good again. Mm. You know, like I said, I think it was on last week's show, the Adelaide crowd is, is unreal. Yep. You know? No, they're still turning up even now. They are. Yep. They are. And and they will. They'll do that. And they're a fairly switched on crowd, so they understand basketball. I didn't like your Hawks team, though. No, Did they, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. But uh, that's all right. Fine with me. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a hostile crowd, and, and that's a team that is tough to go and win in Adelaide. But they've got to have some things start going their way, mm-hmm. which, which would be good to see. That was round 13 in the NBL. Um, we'll keep an eye on this Breakers and Hawks game as we go along as well. And this is a game that the Hawks can't afford to lose. But as we are in the third quarter right now, they're still not in front. So right. <laughs> this would be a big one for them to drop against the Breakers. But we've got to get to the Galen Award. Obviously, round 13 is not quite finished yet. So nothing in from, from Damien Martin with the demo. Nothing from Sean Redditch in the Redditch Player of the Year Award. Hopefully, when, if... And when we talk to Sean Reddick, he'll have, it, have those votes for yep, us as well. Yep. And we can talk to him about, about that. But we can decide the Galen Award winner for this week. The best team man in the NBL, Cody. And yep. before we get to the award itself and go through the list, I want to get your thoughts on Keanu Pinder. Because right now, he's having a breakout season. Has put himself right in the running for the most improved player in the league. Yep. He's probably the most exciting player in the league as yeah. well for what he can do above the rim. But he's not having the brain phase that he had last year no. in Adelaide. He looks to be in a happy place, and it's probably a lot to do with the coaching. He knows Adam Ford very mm-hmm. well. They have known each other for, for a long time, and Fordy knows how to get the best out of him. Keanu knows what Fordy wants from him, where maybe he didn't know what Connor Henry wanted from him yeah. exactly last year, but he's just thriving at both ends of the floor. He is, and you know, last year that's kind of what it looked like. He didn't want to put a foot wrong because yep. he... Yeah, he'd probably get dragged. And that's what happened. He, he make, would make a mistake and he, would. he almost wouldn't come back on the floor no, he, the rest of the game. And it was frustrating to watch, and I'm sure it was frustrating to be part of that as well. Um, but being in 40 system, and like you said, they know each other, they go back a ways. He's just given Keanu some freedom to play, and he's really exciting to watch. Mm-hmm. He's been awesome. Yeah. I find myself yelling at the screen a lot when I see him on yeah. just because of the stuff he does. You know... Getting in lanes, diving on the floor, one on three breaks, well, getting a block a somehow. I talk about what he's doing above the rim, but he's doing all the hustle yeah. plays too. Yeah, that's yeah. it. He just looks like he wants it more than anyone else. Sure. And you're right. I, th- I think he should be leading the most improved. Mm. Just 
purely on effort more than anything. Sure. Um, I don't think it needs to be all about the numbers, mm -hmm. which most awards are, I get. Mm -hmm. But he's been amazing. He's kind of been that shining light in a, in a yeah. bit of a, a dim team. Yep, I agree. And the only reason he hasn't won a nomination for the Galen yet is because... One of the one of the qualifying factors is that your team has to win, yeah, and his team hasn't exactly. won a lot of games. But they won one of their two games this weekend. They so did. Keanu's well and truly in the mix for the Galen Award this week. So is Isaac White. The Hawks needed somebody to step up, yeah. and he came up huge for them. And he just about played more minutes in that one game against Adelaide than he had played the whole season whole so season. far. Yeah. But he stepped up. Lamar Patterson isn't somebody who you would usually think. Is a nominee for the no. for the Gain Award, yep. but he turned into an unselfish player on on Saturday when the Bullets got that much needed needed win against the Jack Jumpers, and I think his ten assists say everything about how he was willing to sacrifice for the team. Isaiah Liafa stopped shooting those three balls as he had been the week before, yep. which was nice to see. He was also a big reason why Bryce Cotton was scoreless for for the first half, so I think that naturally puts him in the mix. Xavier Cooks for all the reasons Always. we spoke about, about <laughs> before, and I don't think we've had a week where he hasn't been yep. a nominee, perhaps except when the Kings weren't winning games. Yep. Jack White, very similar to, to Cooks. He does a bit of everything, and in a team that has a lot of weapons and a lot of stars, he's almost the barometer for, for, for Melbourne United. He's that energy guy for them. Another guy who you might not expect on this list, Matt Hodgson. Yeah. They needed someone to provide some energy, and they needed somebody to... Make a statement. They needed somebody to give them a bit of size and a mm. bit of a presence, and and he did that. Before you select the winner, I would just like to see him get a bit more minutes now because the Wildcats yeah. seem to love to go for the small ball and forget about him yeah. down the stretch. And I almost felt like he'd fouled out in the in the game against the Phoenix because he didn't play the last yeah. the yeah. last five minutes, and he'd been playing well. I even put the question to him afterwards that yeah. until you fouled out, you were playing well. Yeah. He quickly corrected me and said, no, I didn't foul out. <laughs> and this was with his coach sitting next to him. So that, yeah. was, that was a little bit awkward. Yeah. But we, we've talked about his struggles, but right now he's found his feet, I think. He has. And he was really good. He was really good. Did what he needed to, was just big, was athletic, finished around the rim, made some big plays late mm. you know, um, in, in that last game. He, he's definitely, I think, deserves to be on that list right now. Geez, in terms of the winner, though, there's, mm. <laughs> this is probably the toughest week. I agree. Um, my immediate thought was uh, Isaiah Liafa, just be, because of the job he did on Bryce. Mm -hmm. Kept oh. him scoreless for a half and a chunk of that third quarter. My immediate thought, thoughts were that Keanu was the winner. Yep. But then I put the rest of the list together and I, yeah. then I kind of felt like I'm going to leave it to Cody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks for that. I appreciate <laughs> it. Cool, yeah. Um, yeah, so the job he did on Bryce was just amazing and it's as good as anyone's done Absolutely. since he's been in the league. Yep. And you could tell, even the first couple of times Bryce scored, Leafa was either off or he wasn't on him. So someone else had picked him up in transition. Mm -hmm. I think the first one was... Rowdy had picked him up in transition and he was just that half step off. Yep. Bryce, a little bit of daylight, it's all he needs. Yep. Um, so when, we, when I watched that game, he was it. Mm -hmm. I'd already picked it. Yep, yep. <laughs> but then again, you know, Keanu. Mm -hmm. Again, just, just being Keanu and, and being that spark. Yep. Um, I think, again, he is that bit of light in, in a... In a team that is struggling, I guess, to find a bit of their identity as yeah. well. And I think he is doing a really good job of, well, putting a case forward of, of what that team's identity needs to be. Yeah. And I'm hoping that some other guys will follow in his lead yeah. and, and do what he's doing. Sure. But it's not looking like that so far. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably have to go with Keanu this week. I'm, I'm happy with that. He, yeah. was, he was my first choice, but it got a lot tougher. Yeah. I thought... I thought Lamar made a, a, an especially good case. He did. Cooks always makes a good case. Yep. I even thought Hodgie did. And as you said, Isaiah did as well. But yep. I'm very happy for Keanu because it's probably been a long time coming. When you when you were sick that week, Lousy was the one who chose the winner of the Galen and he did his best to talk me into letting him select Keanu, but <laughs> they hadn't won a game that week, yeah. which is a big factor in, yep. in the Galen Awards. So it's a long time coming, but a very worthy winner. I think Keanu Pinder off the, the Garden Award.
For sure. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, it's certainly well-deserved. And you're right. Look, anyone on that list that you've put together could have could have won that, I think. Most of them would win it on any other week, I mm. think. Um, it's one of those types of weeks. Lamar seeing and having a bit of trust in his teammates was, was massive for them mm. moving forward. Mm. He's going to be the go-to guy late in games. But mm-hmm. I think if he can trust his teammates early in games, I think that's going to all of a sudden make Brisbane a bit of a force. But yeah, I think Keanu is... is uh, Certainly deserving of the award this week. Okay, back on Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle and a familiar voice. It's a comfort to talk to the scoring machine, Sean Redditch, on this show, given our, our history. How are things treating you, Sean, as you're in Western Australia right now and getting ready for the borders to finally open up? Yeah, exciting time over here. Um, finally uh, be back open to the world, so... Uh... It'll be, uh, you know, it, it's good to, uh, I guess, kind of be back open and hopefully can navigate all the uh, COVID issues that we haven't had to deal with for about two years' time. But, um, yeah, it's uh, exciting that we're starting to get closer to a little bit back to normality with, with all the travel and all that. And, uh, you know, the Wildcats are, are coming home, so uh, a lot of people here in WA are pretty excited. In terms of Redditch basketball, have you been affected that much – in some of the restrictions up until now? And is anything going to change on that front for you as of, as of this week? Look, I think some of the things uh, now that we're in level two, I think coming on Thursday, you know, you could have some scenarios where some of the programs might have to be limited, but we'll just have to kind of see. We haven't been given full guidance on kind of what the stadium restrictions and all that stuff. Mm. are yet um you, you know the close contact rules as far as coaches and stuff that can be a little bit tricky i'm sure you know i'm not the only uh small business uh dealing with that around here but um you know there there, there are some challenges in there but um i guess from my point of view we've been pretty lucky for two years now and um you know we're gonna have to deal with it over over a little little while but hopefully um Hopefully it's not not too bad, but I'm sure there's going to be uh, some tricky situations, uh, I guess, that you're going to have to deal with. But that's, uh, I guess, that's probably any business owner in the middle of a, a of a of COVID. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned the Wildcats before. As of as we're recording this, they they got to come home as of Tuesday night. They got to reunite with their their loved ones at the airport. Um, once they landed, um, I think they'll be able to. I think they'll be al- allowed to move around as of Thursday and 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 enjoy enjoy being back home for a couple of days before they head to to Adelaide on Saturday for that game on Sunday. Um, how relieved would you be, or h- how would you be feeling if you were part of that Wildcats team and you finally got to got to come home? Jeez, my understanding is they played on in Tasmania on Monday and then they flew Tuesday they had to go to Melbourne to Adelaide a five hour layover in Adelaide then they finally got a <laughs> flight from Adelaide to Perth landed uh, Tuesday night so uh, would have been a long day of travel but probably well worth it and uh, you know to be away I think it was something like 68 days or something mm. pretty remarkable that they've uh, you know I think they probably did better than a lot of people expected when you're away that long. So um, would have been exciting for themselves, for their families. And, uh, you know, that's, yeah, I think I've said it on the show before, a nine day road trip is tough. Uh, you know, you get in over 60 days away. That's, uh, that's incredibly challenging. Some of them with, with kids and, um, you know, a lot of commitments there. So uh, you know, I've seen some photos of the, of the hugs and the excitement of their partners. It was, that would have been an emotional scene at that first airport. Absolutely. Um, another thing that is a little bit emotional that I want to get your thoughts on as of last week, um, Jack Bendat passed away. Um, I talked about it earlier on the show with, with Cody and, and we agree it when you've lived the full life that he has, it's a time to celebrate, probably not mourn his life, but 
you had a really close bond with him. Every championship you won at the club, obviously, was with him as your as your owner. I know from from talking to him that you were obviously one of his favourites, and he had a a lot of affection for you. Um, how do you reflect on, I guess, the time you spent with him, um, his ownership of the club, and and the life that that he that he was able to lead? Look, I was probably one of the few Wildcats there that got to kind of see the transformation that he performed at the club. Yep. Um, you know, I came over in 2005, six. Um, Andrew Vlahoff was the owner at the time, and and the club was 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 okay, but they were you know they were they were kind of just getting by. Um, and when Jack bought the club um, a few years later, um, you know, it was right before we kind of started to go on that, uh, that streak where we're playing in grand finals mm-hmm. almost every year. Um, you know, the, the focus on getting back into the community, you know, everyone wearing red, we went from, you know, when I, when I got here, we were probably getting a couple thousand fans to the game and it was a good atmosphere. All of a sudden challenge stadium was packed. Then we moved to the arena and, um, from there, just the Wildcats, uh, I guess popularity, everything just really exploded. Um, and just to see the input that, that, you know, one person can come in and really change, change a club and trajectory of, of where it's going. What well, was, was pretty impressive. And, and, you know, the Wildcats were, were an outstanding club organization already, but I think he just took it to another level. And, um, just for him to, you know, he always kind of felt like he always had your back, mm-hmm. You know, he was going to do the right thing by the club and make sure, uh, you know, you had everything you needed to, to be successful. You know, if we needed to go sign a Bryce Cotton, well, he was, you know, he made you work for it, I think. <laughs> um, but he definitely, uh, if that was going to be the difference between winning and losing, um, he was going to provide everything. And, uh, you know, I was just uh, so amazed by the transformation he, he brought to the club and the resources and the passion he had to um, – to, to really give back to the community as well and, and just make sure that the Wildcats, you know, were a part of, of the identity of being WA. And so it was fun for me to kind of see that transformation and be a part of it as well. Absolutely. Um, did you get to know him much on a personal level at all? Look, I, we got to um, obviously meet him at a lot of the functions and before and after the games, um, you know, got to go up uh, – to his apartment there, amazing views over, mm. over the Swan River. So got to, got to meet him and, and kind of learn a little bit more about his backstory and obviously uh, coming from America and, you know, uh, just the, uh, I guess really building something from nothing um, was, was, was pretty impressive and just his ability to uh, inspire and um, lead an organization. So he was, you know, he always had a, a, a soft spot for the Wildcats, and uh, you know it was it, it was great to to have him on board. And you know I think the sport and the NBL and, and everyone in WA is better for him landing here in WA a long time ago. Yep, absolutely. Well said. Um, another person I want to get your thoughts on um, my new co-host on the show. Um, he's now stepped into your, the shoes that you filled for the first two seasons, Cody Ellis. And Cody's talked a little bit about his battles with you over the years. From your perspective, both at NBL and SBL or NBL1 level, what are your memories of battling against Cody? Oh, well, look, I remember seeing um, film in, in, of Cody when he played with Kevin Lish at, at St. Louis. Uh-huh. You know, just knowing that he could uh, – he's a very versatile player. Um, well, I guess one of the things that always impressed me, he just never – like the moment never seemed a little bit like Jesse Wagstaff. He just never got phased by the moment like he would always hit the big shot um, make the big plays you know just do those little things that, that a team kind of needs to win whether take a charge or knock down a big three and probably a bit unlucky sometimes in his career to not always get the opportunities he probably deserved mm. um, and it can be hard when you get out of that to get, to get back in but um, you know I always enjoyed playing against Cody and uh, you know we're probably you know, got to play against each other NBL and then also the the SBL and, and now the NBL one. So, um, you know, it's, you know, I think uh, it would have been uh, pretty awesome for him to win that NBL one um, 
I guess what has been the West Coast challenge, mm. but uh, with Sterling just knowing his dad as the coach and yeah. stuff, so he's done a lot for the sport here in WA, and you know, always enjoyed the challenge. It was a it was a toughie. You know, he, he moved his feet well. He, he defended you hard, and and you know, you had to get out on his three point shot because it was he could get it off quick, and he was so accurate. So, um, you know, kind of that modern day four man that uh, you know I think he could be proud of of what he's achieved. Mm in his career so far. Would you still wear it as a badge of honor to find out that he still rates you as being more annoying to play against than Jesse Wagstaff? <laughs> oh, look, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would, that would say the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's a, uh, I, I, I always played the game, uh, to try and, uh, play as hard as I could and, and do the little things to help my team win. And, you know, it was, uh, I, I can imagine it probably would be frustrating playing against myself. <laughs> I, I think you're, you're well aware of what we all think of you, though, Sean. You're without doubt one of the, the all-time greats. Um, speaking of that, that's why you give the votes in our Player of the Year Award here on Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle. And that's why we're called Basketball Hustle, because of your old Charlie Hustle nickname as well. So your legacy lives on. Now, I'm putting you on the spot. Do you have your votes for Round 13 handy? Well, look, there were some pretty good performances. I'm guessing that and, silence uh, probably means you don't have them handy. Is that would, would that be right? Don't have them <laughs> handy, but uh, I will get those to you uh, in in the very short term. The uh, the run this it's getting close there at the top. You know, uh, Sydney's making a run. Tazzy was playing pretty good, but you know, I'm going to be interested to see who kind of sneaks in. I think Melbourne and Perth you know, with the run home from Perth. But uh, I think the Phoenix will be good, barring maybe some injuries. And then it it, it becomes between Illawar and Sydney. And, uh, you know, that's a bit of a – there's definitely a rivalry there. So hopefully it gets down to the last game and those two uh, are playing against each other and uh, we'll see who gets into – squeaks into the the top four. So – but, uh, you know, I like the way Sydney's playing. They're, uh, they're, They're an exciting team at the moment. In terms of your leaderboard, you've got you got Bryce just in front of Jalen Adams still. In your mind, are those the two best players in the league right now? Well, I don't think you can go past JLA yeah, okay. um, at Melbourne. I think he's you know, obviously missed I think the last I think game. He's third on your leaderboard, in fairness. Yeah, I think you know. To me, it's probably those three, and then and then there's you know a bit of space between everyone else. Um, probably just because I look at those guys and you take them out of that team and I'm not sure in their top. And I look, don't, don't look past Mitch Creek either. So, um, he's super consistent. And if Melbourne, Southeast Melbourne Phoenix can, you know, sneak, keep in that top two spot, I think you got to throw Mitch Creek in there. So, uh, it's going to be a battle. I think, you know, any of the, any of those four could probably take it out and you probably wouldn't bat an eye. That, uh, that one of them won it. So um, it's going to be a, a close battle. I'm looking forward to see how it all plays out and uh, see if the uh, experts agree at the end of the year. One more thing I want to get your thoughts on, and then I'll, I'll let you go, Sean. Um, did you ever play a game at any level where you didn't have a head coach? The Adelaide 36ers will be without CJ Bruden for both games this weekend. They're hoping that Jamie Perlman gets back for their game on Friday against the Phoenix. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Look, no, I haven't had a, uh, I haven't had a game where uh, I haven't had a head coach. Mm. I think I've told the story of where CJ actually came back as the head coach after getting fired as a player over in Puerto Rico. So, right. yeah. you know, I've had coaches kind of kicked out of the games or ejected out of the games, and someone else steps into their shoes. But uh, that would be that would be an interesting one to to see. Uh, maybe maybe Dana Johnson can be player coach. We've mm-hmm. seen that in the mm-hmm. in the NBA a few times. Yes. And did Sh- Shane Heal did that as well with uh, the yeah. with the Dragons at one stage, didn't he? Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, who would you say Adelaide is is the best player coach that they would have there at the moment? I don't know. I don't know if it's DJ. DJ's a bit of a bit of a inward thinker. Maybe maybe you go the captain. Maybe Mitch McCarron becomes captain, coach, and your point guard all in, all in the all in the one hit. Yeah, I can see that. May or or, or maybe Cam Bearstow. Yeah, I mean sure. he's got a bit of experience, and 
you know, they seem to look up to him. I mean, Isaac Humphreys is injured, so maybe they just throw a polo on him and <laughs> yeah. he, t- he takes the lead. So uh, that, that'll be interesting. You know, if they have success, Mm. They might be onto something there. <laughs> maybe, maybe. You know, every team in the world has a coach. <laughs> maybe, maybe you just need players. Maybe you don't need one. Maybe you don't need one. <laughs> but it couldn't happen at a worse time. Just finally, could it? They're playing against the Phoenix and the Wildcats this weekend, and that's that's two massive, massive challenges. Yeah, that is that is going to be a tough challenge for them, and uh, to do that, I mean, the only bright spot is the games are at home, but um, I can't see that really helping them in, in this scenario. They might get one of them. I can't see them get two, but, you know, sitting at five and nine, they're going to have to go on a run to uh, catch up with the likes of of the top five. It's going to be uh, a tough one, tough one for them, especially losing Isaac Humphreys as well for the season. Absolutely. All right, Sean, we could keep talking, but it's not your show anymore, so we've got to get back to Cody. But thanks very much for joining us, and by the time we talk to you again, we would have seen you back on our TV screens, which we're all looking forward to, and I'm sure... I'm sure you are as well. Yes, looking forward to uh, a home game. It's been a been a long time, so uh, get to uh, get to RAC Arena, and uh, it looks like it's about fifty percent. But I'm sure those fifty percent of fans will uh, provide a hundred percent of noise. So uh, it'll be great to see some live basketball again. Okay, back on Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle. I'm here with Cody Ellis, my co-host. And there wasn't just a lot in the NBL to talk about, Cody. Mm-hmm. The Boomers played three games in Japan over, over the past week, coached by Rob Beveridge, captained by Nick Kay, and they came away with three wins in the World Cup Asian qualifiers. First up on Friday, 98-61 to over Chinese Taipei. Then on Sunday, 80-64 to over Japan. Mm-hmm. And then again on Monday, 90-71 to against Chinese Taipei. Yep. Um, I'll let you give a bit of a rundown on what you saw from those games, but what stood out to me was how well organised the team looked for a yeah. team that had about two days of preparation. Yeah, they, they looked really good. And that's, that's purely because they have, a, well, Bevo had picked a team full of players that are smart sure. and, and understand that, yeah. all right, we need to put this system in place. Um, it would have been a fairly short list of plays that Bevo put in, mm-hmm. but it would have been more of like motion and, and that sort of stuff just to get them playing. Mm-hmm. Um, he would have put a couple sets in, but nothing, nothing big. Um, it would have been more just movement schemes than anything. Mm-hmm. So they could just go out and play and, and show their talent, which is what they did. Mm-hmm. And they were all really good. You know, it was good to see Emmett go out and, and, and play well. That second game, 11 assists. Yeah. With, I think it was only one turnover. I think I so, think. Yeah. so yeah. that is uh, a very impressive stat line, no matter where you're playing in the world, um, especially playing for the Boomers. Mm. Um, and then just looking at Nick Kay and his yeah. consistency for a change, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, near triple-double game two, triple-double yeah. game three. Yeah. Probably just short on game one, purely because they were blowing out yep. Chinese Taipei. Probably didn't play as many minutes yeah. as, as the other two. Yeah, fun team to watch. Mm. Young, athletic, um, energetic. Mm. Uh, Bevo and the coaching staff had them, had them playing really well and, mm. and buying in, and, and that's the big thing. You know, pulling on that, that Boomers jersey and, and the green and the gold is a massive honour, and every time you go out, you need to leave everything on the floor, and I think they did that, which, mm. is, which is really good um, to see, considering they were a young team, and mm. uh, I think... Australian basketball is in pretty good hands for a while to come. Absolutely. At the same time, the Tall Blacks were having a, a good week as well. They Very won right. three games. And one of the men that we talked about last week, Rob Lowe, who for some reason can't get a look into the breakers, yeah. he showed that he's in good touch, he's in good shape, and he was instrumental in their three wins, as was Tom Vodanovic. Yeah, both of those guys were awesome. Mm. Um, I think, if nothing, it just shows that Rob's not hurt or anything like that. Yeah. So anyone wondering what's going on, it certainly seems out of his control why he's not playing. Yeah. Um, again, near triple-double. I think he had 15, 10, and 6 or 7 mm. in that first game. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Just huge. And for a seven-footer, that's a very impressive stat line. It is. <laughs> um, Vodanovic was, again, just playing yep. Vodanovic basketball. Yep. He was really good um, doing the stuff he does for the Kings and just that brute force and that shooting prowess. And, um, again, it, it's good to see um, New Zealand do well as well. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's always good for us and our neighbour to, uh, to be successful in, in basketball. Yeah, it would be fun to see them qualify for the World Cup. And okay. if the Webster brothers come back to play for it, and, you know, obviously if Abercrombie's healthy by, yeah. by then as well, and if Steve Adams wants to play as well, yeah. they, they, they can be a, a handy team. Surely um, Micah can dust off the boots, right? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> if you've seen him on the Jack Jumpers bench, he's He looks like he's, he's great still training. in good nick. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you, you, t- you touched on Nate bullying you around before. Oh, God. M- M- Mika, Mika's got to be the strongest guy you ever played against. Well, Mika might be the only guy I've seen actually be able to stand up against a Nate yeah. backing you down in the post. And he's six and inches shorter. Move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he was, uh, he was certainly one of the strongest players I ever played against. Absolutely. Now, before we get to round 14 in the NBL, Cody, a couple of things I want to get your thoughts on. I would suggest if any team's going to make a change mm-hmm. personnel-wise, they pretty much have to do it this week or don't bother. Yeah. So we spoke about the 36ers before. They've got an import spot up their sleeve. They don't have Isaac Humphreys, who's out for the season. But CJ Bruden, as we said, has got a lot on his plate. And they don't have a GM of basketball anymore with Jeff Van Groningen gone. Do the 36ers still try to bring somebody in? Uh, it's a tough one. I, I don't think so. I think they need to probably concentrate on the locals, mm-hmm. get them a bit of confidence back in, into them. Because really, I think well, they're probably a bit out of touch with the the top four too as well, well right? What's five and nine? Five and nine, and as we touched similar on, to Cairns, right? as we touched on, they've got the Phoenix and the Wildcats yeah. this week. Yeah, so that could very easily be five and eleven. Yeah, and then at that point, your season's done anyway. Hmm. While I said, you know, CJ is not one to ever give up. I think it would be the perfect opportunity to kind of, I guess, loosen the reins a bit and and let the boys, the locals, play. Hmm. But, I mean, his frustrations have been them not buying into his system anyway from, from the looks. So, a bit of a double-edged sword. I don't think they should. I think mm. it's just not the right situation for them to be going after someone new. Mm. But a tough one. And CJ's got too much on his plate now anyway. <laughs> yeah, it might just not be logistically possible no. now for them no. anyway. What about the Perth Wildcats? Um, Unfortunately, it looks like Michael Frazier is going backwards every game yeah. he plays, and it's not fun to say, but that's, that's the reality. Do the Wildcats stick with him, or do they make a change? Again, it's a tough one. You're right. I think he's probably taken another step back again. Mm. Um, he looks completely devoid of confidence, doesn't he? He does. And he's not a point guard, but even trying to bring the ball up the floor, he couldn't do it. No, he couldn't. He got that eight-second back court, and then... Yeah, I don't think he that, came back on again after no, that. No, not really. Yeah. So Because I think he got another turnover straight after that. Mm. And it was just... It sucked to watch. It, it, it's tough because, you're right, it looked like his confidence has just shot. Yeah. Whether that's coaching staff getting on him or if that's just himself being being hard on himself his confidence that he had in that you know first couple of months was just it's gone now um they're probably a club that could make a change mm. but what do you get you know, who, who do you get in yeah. do you go and get a big or do you hope that Hodge didn't just have one game where mm. he was really good against a team that wasn't big yeah the interesting thing is, I haven't heard an injury update, but it looked like Hodgie might have pinged his calf late in yeah. that game. So interesting. That might make the decision for them if, he, if he's injured. Yep, yep. And if he's injured, then that really sucks for them. Yeah. Um, and for him. Well, it does. It does. Yeah. Especially coming after a, a good one like that. Yeah. Bit of confidence back into him. Had a fairly rocky season so far. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, that would be brutal. I, I hope that's not the case. I, I hope, I, I hope I he's fit and healthy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I still think that they need a big bruiser in there to, to help out. Especially because it looks like Majuk's not, he's not he, I don't know if he's healthy or not, but he's, he's not in Scott Morrison's plans either way. No, he's not. And it, it just looks like they're trying to play a bit of small ball too. Yeah. Um, again, it's that kind of NBA style of just go out and play type rather than a whole lot of sets. And you, you see it with Bryce, you know. Yeah. Everything was run for Bryce last year. Mm-hmm. 
95 percent of things yeah. were run for Bryce yeah. last year, yeah. and that's he, where he was playing in the system. He was, yeah. He was playing in Trev's system that works really well. Mm -hmm. Him being a, an elite player like he is made the system really good. <laughs> yes. They're not really in that kind of a system now. It seems like Bryce is just trying to get his from just broken plays or here, Bryce, go get us a bucket. So I'm not, I'm not sure. It's, it's interesting. Majuk comes on, he plays a couple of minutes, and then he's kind of done for the game. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure what they want to do. If they want to get a big that's a more athletic type to, to run the floor and, mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff, or if they're going to be happy playing that small ball type basketball I think that depends on who they get in, if they do. What about the Brisbane Bullets? They're not getting virtually anything out of Isaiah Moss. I know he no. had a pretty bad hamstring injury to start the season, but he's had enough time now where I think if he was going to be someone that was a difference maker, he would have shown a bit more than he is right now. Um, mm -hmm. They've got plenty of other talent, but it, they probably need to go on a really good winning streak to mm -hmm. be any chance of making the playoffs. Yep. Do you stick with Isaiah if you're the Bullets or do you perhaps looking, look at a change? Yeah, a, another tough one. <laughs> He's someone that came in with a fairly good um, resume as well and someone who everyone was like, well, he's going to shoot the lights out. You know? well, Derek Rucker said he's the best shooter he's ever seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've heard all those statements yeah. from the different people mm. and different players yes. and all that sort of stuff. So, um I've stopped listening to everyone saying that sort of stuff because <laughs> I, I believe it when I see it, yep. uh, make my own judgment on it. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, look, he, it, again, it's been a frustrating one for him, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then trying to find his way in the system, seeing where he fits. But you're right, he has played enough games mm -hmm. now where you'd think he would be comfortable in the system. He would yeah. be comfortable in his role or know what his role is, but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like that's the case. Yeah. So again, what do you do? Do you do you go get another big and have big tires? Your mm -hmm. your big coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. I think he's been good for them. A bit inconsistent. Um, that would allow Franks to be at the four and not yeah. have to spend any time at the five as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because that's where they're going to get in trouble when he's guarding those those big guys. Sure. Um, again, they've got to guard him. You know, he's proven that he's a legitimate threat from the three. He's mm -hmm. one of the better shooting players in the league, let alone mm -hmm. <laughs> bigs. So double-edged sword again. But do you bite the bullet, pardon the pun, and go get someone? Or do you just stick with what you got and mm -hmm. try to move forward and if you don't make finals this year, all right, at least we're move, making steps forward towards mm -hmm. next year and, and um, the future. Another thing I want to bring up, and Alex Loudon would hate me for doing this, and <laughs> if he knew I was doing it, he would tell me not to do it. Yep. So this isn't in, in any way done because Lowes has asked me to do it because he doesn't want me to do it. <laughs> but can you give me any reason in the world, Cody, why Alex Loudon is not the one doing the courtside commentary from Games in Cairns? Because he's there, he's available, he's willing, yep. he wants to do it, he would love to have a career in the media. No offence at all to John Guana, but he, he gets flown up from Brisbane to Cairns to do these games. Yep. Lowes is there, ready to go. He wants the microphone in his hands. He does. Why? Why is he not on our TV screens, Cody? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe they're, they're scared that he'll drop the <laughs> mic again like he did in his, uh, his farewell speech. Oh, but uh, <laughs> no, I couldn't think of a better person. Um, again, someone who, who knows the game so well, who wants to do it, first of all, yeah. who's comfortable doing it, who's really good to listen to, knows the, the Cairns team, the Cairns, not so much system, but he knows the team. He knows uh, the crowd and, and everything about that whole Cairns community. Mm. I, I don't see why they wouldn't have him doing mm. it. I'd love to be listening to him. Me too. Um, it'd, it'd be perfect. He'd be perfect for it. How do we make it happen then? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> NBL, get it done. Oh. Get it done. If Sean Reddick and Damien Martin can be on our TV screens, then, <laughs> then surely Lowes can be. <laughs> exactly. Surely. Exactly. It's a, it's a frustration of mine. It has been ever since he retired. He doesn't like me talking about it because he gets embarrassed and he doesn't want it to make it look like he's pushing for a job. So by no means has he asked me to do it. But please, for the next Taipan's home game, can we consider him? Because I... 
if nothing else, he'll be a lot of fun. He's he's energy. He's, yeah. he's infectious. Um, there we go. I hope somebody listens. Listens, Cody. Fingers crossed. Um, fingers crossed. Maybe his uh, energy will leak onto the team a bit too. That'd <laughs> Maybe. Be good. What we've learnt though is that both Sean and Damo have been asked about this in the past and are not willing to lift a finger to help him. Yeah. Which yeah. is no, which is no surprise if you no. know those two. <laughs> Before we get to round fourteen in the NBL, Cody. We haven't spoken about your NBL, NBL one season that's getting very yeah, close it is. at the Warwick Senators. Um, Cole Zunig, fresh off playing for the Boomers, will come and join your team. As, how's, your, how's your squad shaping up under a new coach, Luke Brennan? Yeah, good. Um, not that Trigg has been here at all yet. <laughs> no. um, they've been stuck over east. You so might see him this week. Possibly, but we'll, we'll see. We'll mm. see what happens. Um, your training session on Thursday night, he might be here. Possibly. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Probably in quarantine. Who knows? <laughs> I think they're out. There. I think they're out on Thursday. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. It's it's been really good though, man. It's been um, it's been a lot of fun. You know, Charlie and and Tom Witts have been really good, being that middleman, listening to to Trig and what he wants to put in play, and then you know talking to us through it and and getting the system as much as possible in place mm. while Trig is not here. Um, but it's been fun. You know, we've had a lot of the um, young boys, a lot of the under-20s guys training with us, um, which has been good, seeing some of the, the younger guys coming up and through the system. Yeah, I, I'm, I think we'll be really tough as long as we get our full squad here, and which, will, which will be nice. We've still got a fair few guys missing, and I'm looking forward to, to the season ahead. I think we'll, uh, we'll certainly be able to push for it if we, uh, if we can stay healthy and, and get everyone on the same page. A couple of old heads, Corbin Rowe and, and Caleb Davis back yeah. again for, a, for another crack. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really good. We say old heads and they're both under 30 know, years old, yep, yep. Which, is, <laughs> <laughs> which is crazy. Um, yeah, I think it was the third or fourth session where I looked around the court and realised that I was the oldest on the team at, at 31. <laughs> You're 31. Man. Exactly. So we've still got a pretty, uh, pretty young core there, which is, which is really good, but uh, a lot of experience. So... You get Austin Bruden to come back then, speaking of CJ. Yeah, you're right. I know. Need Aussie back just to, <laughs> just to raise that, uh, that average age just all, <laughs> by four or five years. <laughs> How are you feeling, though? You've, you're in good shape. You're mm-hmm. looking forward to the season ahead, and we're only probably five or six weeks yeah. away from that first game. Yeah, I think our first game's April 8th. Um, what, five weeks? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm feeling good. Feeling really good. Starting to, starting to really feel like um, my body's in shape now, and... Kicking into gear, trying to find time to get those extra shots up again, mm-hmm. and I've got a key to our second little gym, thankfully, so <laughs> I'm able to sneak in there and get some shots up, which is great. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm feeling good, feeling good and excited, and would just like to start playing some games mm-hmm. instead of training. <laughs> Okay, Cody. Round 14 now in the NBL to look forward to. A couple of days in between before we get underway on Friday. As we speak, looks like the Yellowwara Hawks are over that hurdle of the New Zealand breaks and they're going to get this win. So it's a big win for them to probably stay in touch with the top four. I don't think they quite go back into it as a result of this win. But no. It'll put them 10-7 and seven equal with the Sydney Kings. So some more mathem- mathematician-like minds will have to work out who goes fourth <laughs> and who doesn't. Yep. But... Friday night in Adelaide, this is a tough one for the 36ers, as we talked about. They won't have their coach, CJ Bruton. Yep. I don't know if any players have been affected as well as him, so this is a tough one against the South East Melbourne Phoenix team that's now back to full strength and, and playing well. Oh, it is. It is. And I think even if Adelaide had their full roster and you know all the coaching staff mm. there, I think this would be a tough one for them. You know, Obviously, Phoenix have to go in expecting that... You know, Adelaide's going to going to throw everything at them mm. and not just come in thinking it's a really depleted Adelaide yeah. team with no coach, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think Phoenix do that sort of stuff anyway. No. So I think Phoenix fairly handily on that one. First game on Saturday, mm-hmm. interesting one. It, it's in it's in Hobart. Jack Jumpers and the Breakers. Breakers now coming off this loss. Jack Jumpers coming off a couple of losses too. Mm, yeah. Whose home game is it? Do you know? <laughs> I think it's the Jack Jumpers. So the only difference I think that means is that. There'll, there'll be a crowd. There'll be a crowd. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, again, it's it's just so hard to read the breakers. You know, I, 
I mean, they'll have a, a couple of their guys back, I, I'd assume. Well, we talked earlier. They were leading at half time. They're now they were. 23 points behind. Yes, yeah. the Hawks. Yeah, and that's got to be frustrating for the players, the coaches, the fans, and, and all that sort of stuff. You know, because they're again on paper they're they're a solid unit and they've got some really good players mm-hmm. and guys like Peyton Siva is is an absolute jet. We just saw him hit a three. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he he is really good. I don't know what it is with them. I don't know if it's an identity crisis. They don't know what their identity is or, or something like that, whether it's a system. But they're just, you know, they're, they're not having a good year at all. No. And it's, it's it's tough for them to be away from home as well. Well, you talked before about the light at the end of the tunnel that the yeah. Wildcats could sense. Yeah. They still don't, they don't have that. They don't. And, again, that's, you know, really frustrating. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's got to be tough for guys like Tom Abercrombie who's mm-hmm. not playing and yeah. is, just can't do anything. To help, I think it'd be a different Breakers team with him out there, Absolutely. purely for his yeah. leadership. Um, but I think I think Tazzy get up over over them. Do we have a timeline on Big Magne? Do we, do we know when he's no, back I yet? Still, I still think he's a couple of weeks. Couple away. weeks away, yeah. So look, I, I I do think I think they run over New Zealand as well. This is an interesting one. On paper, it looks like it should be an easy win for Melbourne mm. United at home to the Brisbane Bullets, but I'm not so sure. Yeah, no, Brizzy kind of look like they're starting to get. Some things in place and get their heads on right, and sober looks healthy now too. Well, and that's a huge thing for them. Hopefully, he's one hundred percent because I know that first game or two he looked very hesitant to yeah. push it and, and do all that. But uh, he's such a difference maker for them, and I think he helps Lamar have a bit of confidence in the rest of the team too. Yeah. Just that extra guy to be able to give the ball and he go do something as well. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that'll be a really good game. I think it'll be really good. I assume JLA will be back. I think so. Yeah. Well, he's at home, so even, yeah. even if his wife hasn't given birth yet, he might be able to sneak out. To sneak play out. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So no, I think I think Melbourne end up just too deep um, and too talented. But uh, I, I do think that'll be a good game. Then we've got three games on Sunday to look forward to. Yeah. Good luck for the Adelaide Thirty Sixers. So yeah. A little over 36 hours after playing the Phoenix, they're back at home to a Perth Wildcats team who would have enjoyed spending the week back at home. Yeah, uh, a Cats team that's going to be what you'd think fairly rejuvenated mm. and, and ready to take on the second half of the season. And again, Adelaide without CJ, without the, the head of the snake. So uh, that's a tough one. I, even if it was a full-strength Adelaide team, I think, mm. I think Perth get that done. This is a tough one, you would imagine, for the Cairns Taipans as well. The yep. Sydney Kings going back home with all the confidence in the world. They're at home to the Taipans. Yeah, and, and Sydney at home, another one. Um, once Kudos is, is bumping, mm. that's a tough place to play as well. Again, Cairns has got nothing to lose, so yeah. I'm hoping that they take another step forward and, and show a bit more energy. And I mean, you've got McCall on, on Adams. I think that's going to yeah. be a heck of a matchup. That bit of extra length on him. Mm-hmm. Um, be interesting to see how that goes, but uh, Finger and Cooks playing above the rim together. Yeah, again, another interesting matchup. Yeah. So that'll that'll be really good. Hopefully, it's a good game. Mm. Uh, I think it's got potential to be uh, if can show up. Yeah, but I, I don't think the King, Kings get that one. This last game on Sunday could be the game of the round, at least mm. on paper. So we've got the Phoenix at home to to the Hawks. Both teams fighting for a playoff spot, and both teams coming off coming off wins. Yeah, yep. Again, on paper, should be an awesome, awesome game. Phoenix has kind of been the Hawks' hoodoo team the past year and a half, yeah, though. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I just feel like they just don't match up real well against them for whatever reason. Bit of a different squad this year, but uh, still, I just don't think they match up very well against them. I think Phoenix flex a bit of a muscle again um, and get that done against the Hawks. Last game of the round is Monday night. Hmm. Um, the Breakers... I don't know if you say it's at home. It's in Tasmania anyway, <laughs> yeah, against the yeah. Bullets. And I imagine Lamar Patterson's got a bit of a bit of a point to prove. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think uh, I think he'll come out ready to go, which will be fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he also needs to make sure that he's not going out there trying to prove that point too sure. much that yep. takes away from the team, especially with that couple steps they've taken forward the past few games. Yeah, look, really the Briz- Brizzy Bullets should get that one done. But, again, like we've seen tonight with, uh, with New Zealand, they, they can put up a fight. It's just trying to string 40 minutes together mm. is their big issue. Absolutely. All right, so that's round 14 to look forward to in the NBL. It's been a big show, Cody. It's been good fun going through it all with you. Thank you to Hoop7 for making it possible. 
I hope to be back later in the week with a Tap Touch preview with the one and only Maddie Knight, so stay tuned for that. But let's wrap things up. I'm Chris Pike, and, and Cody, let's finish off with, let's look ahead to next week. This is going to be the first chance to welcome back the man who you've replaced on, yeah. on this show in the co-host chair. We're going to catch up with Damien Martin, sometimes known as the traitor. <laughs> but how much are you looking forward to picking the brains of, of Damo? That'll be good. It'll be good. You know, another... Another guy that is just a wealth of knowledge and, and it'll be fun to pick his brain and uh, might have to see if he can sell me a house cheap. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but uh, no, it'll be really good. It'll be really good. Looking forward to it.